Hey guys, this is Brandon at Gamer Guy B. Um, this is a. I'm gonna tell you guys a, a story. I guess today. Um, it's a. It's a hard one for me to tell a bit. Um, so if I seem to stutter or if I. Uh, if I seem to fall apart a little bit, I'll apologize now. Um, so. Because it's November, um, and not that it only because it's November. I've been thinking about my friend, um, my friend Colin Wilmot a lot lately. Um, he was my my best friend when I was um, when I was twenty four, I think. Um, Two thousand eight uh, was his was the year that he passed. Um, so he, we met when he was, or well, when I was 20, 19. Uh, we worked at Subway together for, I think two years, something like that. And then uh, we even lived together for about six months to a year and he decided to end that because he was, uh, he just needed to, needed to be home with his family, I guess, at the time. We were, uh, we were, we had a third roommate. Um, and it wasn't like a, a, like we weren't together together. We were just roommates and we were really good friends. Um, he was my best friend. Uh, he joined the military and he served, um, served Canada in, in the military and he, um, and he died for, for Canada in the military. Um, so I'm gonna, I guess I'll tell you guys the experience that I went through more or less than the, less than the time leading up to. Um, but just to give you a background, I guess on our friendship aside from the fact that we worked at Subway together, we lived together for a little bit. Colin was a very positive influence in my life overall. I would go so far as to say I loved him. Um, initially more than, more than a friend and then now as a, and even in the in the end, as a brother, um, the closest thing I ever had to a brother. Um, he was really, like I said, he was just a really a really positive force in my life. Um, he was incredibly supportive. He was very like like very fitness driven. We we worked out together. We did everything like we spent like I, any time I could get with him. I was like to hang out with him. I was. It was treasured to me, I guess. Um, we, he would he would come home. He, he moved up to Calgary when, um, like, we were in Nova Scotia. In New, sorry, New Brunswick at the time is in Fredericton. It's where he grew up, and I lived there for for the better part of ten years. Um, he would, anytime he come home, it didn't matter what it was. I would drop what I was doing. If I had to call in sick to work to be there, I would do it. Um, and he, I remember him saying to me one time that it was awesome that I could just be there when he was able to get home and, and to spend time and like to go to, to go out to eat or to, to be around him or just to be able to hang out and do stuff together when he came home from um, from serving when he was on his his leave, that kind of stuff. Um, but he meant he meant so much to me as a as a person, as a friend, as a brother, like I I can't stress that enough how much he was somebody that I just loved to spend my time with. I don't think there's been somebody who's made me laugh as much since um, as he and I laughed together. He and I game together. We did tons of stuff together in regards to like just going out and even trying parkour a little bit, even though I was nowhere near the shape I could have been to to take part in that. Um, we tried it anyway. Um, but it, I've, I've spoken about him in my in my gaming story video. If you want to take a look at that, but it's uh, we we spent a lot of online time together in um, a game called Monster Hunter. Um, just a quick reiteration of that: I have his copy here with my copy and my partner's copy. We all played together. Um, he had introduced me to my current partner, um, or to the to the website that I met my partner on. So. 
find someone in .ca. I don't even know if it exists anymore, if it's a, if it's a paid site or whatever, but he's like, hey, I'm, I'm on the site, whatever you should go on to. It's pretty cool, it's free, whatever. Uh, made the profile, started talking to my partner it's years ago now, but it's, uh, that's, uh, that's time for another story. So I'm gonna fast forward a bit to 2000, Christmas of 2007. Um, I can remember sitting at a table with him and his girlfriend in a, in a restaurant called The Diplomat at the time. That was the place that we, we went anytime we had the opportunity to. Um, that was just kind of the place we went because we used to go there all the time after work. We'd work till four in the morning at Subway and then we would go and have breakfast at The Diplomat. So it was a, a bit of a tradition. Um, but it was just before he was going to head to Afghanistan to serve, um, which he had insisted on. So his, as, a, as again, a testament to his character, he wanted to serve in Afghanistan. He was a medic, um, and that was his, his, his destiny, obviously. He, he wanted that to be his legacy, So it, and, it, and it currently is, or in it, well, not currently, but it is his legacy. It was what he, um, he had chosen to do for himself, and that was where he wanted to be with his life. Um, so the Christmas before, where I'm sitting at the table with him and his and his girlfriend, um, who ended up being his fiance very much later on that week, I think. Um, we're, we're talking, um, talking about the, he's like, oh, we just took our, before I came back, we took our pictures today. And I was like, well, well what pictures are you talking about? And he's like, oh, she doesn't like me to talk about it, he said. Um, but it's the pictures. He's like, don't worry, you'll never see it. Um, it's the picture that they that they take before they go to serve to in case something should happen to them. It's what they use in the media. It's the one that you'll see all over the place. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna post it in the in the video or not. So if it's, if it's there, you'll see it. If it's not, there's um, you can probably find it online somewhere. It's um, so. After that, he um, he stayed with me for a couple nights, and he went to a hotel just to to kind of get his self his self together and his time alone. And then um, him and his, he went to visit his girlfriend's family that year, that kind of thing. But I remember sitting at a table, and he's like, "Don't worry, you'll never see this picture. It's only like we take it because we have to." That kind of thing. Fast forward to um, July sixth. Um, he's over in Afghanistan at this point for a few months. I think we had we had written a little, a couple of letters back and forth. I don't know whatever happened to the letter. I wish to God that I could have it still, but I don't. Um, because he, I remember him telling me, he's like, hey, the guy's getting letters and that kind of stuff from home. And if you could send some, that would be cool. So I I did, and it, that was my, <laughs> something that we did. He, um, he actually placed a phone call from Afghanistan using like a satellite phone or something to talk to me for a little bit. So it was cool. But he, on, on July, again, July 6th, um, I remember I was getting ready to go to the mall or something with my partner, at the t with my partner at the time, I will say at the time, it's my current partner. Um, and we had just gotten, I just got my shoes on, I was got ready to go. And my cell phone rang and, um, it was his sister calling me to tell me that he had been killed in action um, by a roadside bomb he had stepped on when he was doing a patrol. I, um, I've never said this story out loud before, so it's, um, it's going to hit me hard here in a minute, I think. I remember falling to my knees and just thinking, oh my God, this can't be happening. And it just, like, I I got off the phone with his sister. It didn't hit me immediately. But as soon as I put my phone down, I fell to the ground. And I started to cry. I don't know if I, if I screamed or if I just started crying or what. Um, my partner came in the room from the kitchen. I was in the living room. I don't know why. And he's like, what the hell happened? Are you okay? And I was like, Colin's dead. He's, and that's, I think that's all I could say at the time. He, again, a roadside bomb went off and he, 
he was caught in the shrapnel of it. There was no, they airlifted him by helicopter to the base and they, they couldn't, or to, it might've been a hospital in Kandahar. I don't really remember. Um, but his sister had gotten in touch with me to see if I could help get, help her get in touch with his friends and let them know what had happened. So I went on Facebook and did my duty in that regard. I don't know if, I don't know if I did it well or if I, if I did it, but I did it. And it was so hard to do. He, his sister didn't want his friends to hear it or his close friends that weren't necessarily in contact with him all the time to hear it through the media or to get it that way. So she, um, I could be wrong. I might even remember this part wrong, but it, that's how I remember it. Um, so I had gotten in touch with everybody that I needed to get in touch with, or anybody that I could anyway, before Facebook stopped me because they thought I was spamming people. So anyway, um, fast forwarding past that to the funeral, and I can remember being like, oh my God, are they going to take him back to Edmonton? Are they going to bury him here? I remember being really emotional about it because I didn't want to have to, like, I was terrified that I was going to be able to go to the funeral. Oh, God. And it's, it was such a fucking hard time. Like, I can't even stress enough. It's harder than losing. Losing a friend is harder than losing anybody. Okay. Sorry. Losing your best friend is far harder than losing any family member. Or anybody that, like a, a parent, a grandparent, it's so much harder. <sighs> because, oh, sorry, because you just expect them to be there for everything. Like it's, like he was getting ready to start a family, his, I was like, back then I wasn't thinking of like having kids of my own and that kind of thing had never just didn't seem like a possibility. And I was like, I'll have your kids to, to spoil and to, to, to be like a unofficiated uncle. And like, I can just remember thinking all this stuff and wondering when, like, it's, it's not going to happen anymore. He's not going to be there for, for anything anymore. And it, like, I couldn't, to deal with that and to deal with it, it's, it's fucking terrible. It still hits me hard. I still haven't, I, I feel like I've dealt with it, but it'll, it's something I will never get over. And it's something that it's so, so difficult to deal with. I can't even, like every time I, anytime a song comes on that I, that like we would have, like he would have, he used to message me and email me about stuff and be like, Hey, I have this really cool song. You should listen to it. And I, he'd send me an MP3 and I, I've managed to save all those MP3s on an old hard drive that I have access to still. So it's like, I've got plenty of memories with them and I've even got like an old, a file from an MSN chat, um, that's got information like, like, months worth of our conversations just listed in them and it's in a real, really weird code so to read it it's really difficult to see it but I've got it and that's that's what matters I can remember for the months following calling his cell phone just to hear his voicemail pick up and hear his voice and to to know that because I don't I don't ever want to forget what he sounds like it sounds almost weird to say it out loud. God. And thankfully there's a couple of videos online that he managed to do or had not managed to do, but he had done while he was out in Calgary that I can go back and just see his voice or to hear his voice and to see his face and have him talk. And it's there. So I, I'll never forget it, but I'll, I'll fast forward. Um, going to the funeral and seeing everybody there that was there to see him. And like I said, I remember being terrified that he wasn't going to be brought home for his funeral and to like, to go through, like I took a full, 
a full two weeks off from the job that I had at the time. And a friend from our inner circle was one of the supervisors there at the time. And she had basically covered for me saying that I know he's not going to be in because it, because of what just happened and that kind of thing. Um, so like uh, taking the time off and just being around, um, going to the funeral and being scared to approach the casket because I didn't, still not wanting to really accept what had happened. Um, I remember walking up to the casket with the girl that he had been with for the most of the time and, um, and looking at him and thinking, good God, it doesn't even look like him. And it, it didn't, like, I mean, like, he was, he was killed in a, in a shrapnel, so, like, it's, like, I can only imagine his last minutes and what he must have been thinking. And that, like, he didn't even, didn't even look like himself. It was something that it's, you never, you're never really prepared for it when you see, like, it's, I can't even explain it, but to see him laying there, not really looking like himself, and, like, not even sure if, if it's him mostly that's laying there and what they do to the body and it's like, uh, it's just terrible to think of that, of, of everything that he must have gone through to be into that place. Um, I didn't follow through with the funeral. Um, remember being at the funeral with, with my partner and friends and just when they're lowering him to the ground and, and not being able to stand and having to go through all of it. And it's just, it's so, so terrible to, to be around when a friend just isn't going to be around anymore. When it's somebody that you've not necessarily planned your life around because they're your friend, but you just always expect them to be there. And then they're suddenly not, and there's nothing that you can do about it. It's not like you got into an argument or it's not that you got angry with each other. It's the fact that he's just not there. And I can remember the last time I saw him alive and telling him that he needed to come back and that I loved him and that he was the closest thing I had to a real brother. And then that would be just, I can remember giving him a hug and him getting in the cab to go I don't know if it was to the airport or to a hotel or something, but I just, I said, just please come back. And that's all I care about. Like it, it didn't matter elsewise. Um, so in closing, in the end, I just like, I, I wanted to tell the story because he's, he's, he's a hero. He died a hero and he died trying to help people. That was his, his ultimate goal. He was a medic and that was the reason that he wanted to, he wanted to be a medic so he could help people. For him, like even every, like every now and then I'll, he'll pop into my head and like getting into like the weeks leading up to, or just after the funeral, I can remember every now and then I have these dreams about him and he's, he's right there in the room with me and it's like nothing ever happened. It's like, he's right there and we're talking as though he's, he's not gone anywhere. And I have a full, I wake up and there's so, the dreams are so vivid. And I know that it has to be more than just a dream. He's, I can remember waking up out of one of these dreams one time, the first time I had one of these dreams, I remember waking up and hearing him say my name when I was laying in bed. And I, I don't know if it was him, but I, I remember hearing him and I was wide awake at the time. It's like nothing. Um, I could hear him saying my name and it, it let me know that he's, even if he's not here, he is always there. And I know that he's watching. I know that he's, I know that he's around. I know, I know that ultimately he's probably in a better place. Um, I mean, not that it wouldn't have, like he'd be in a better place if he was still alive because he'd be here, but I know that he's okay and that when my time comes, I will get to see him again. And that's really important. So it's 
to to love a man or to be with a man in again not that I that I compare my my love for him to a, the love of a man that I would like I love my partner but to have somebody who's your best friend in the military to be like a family member in the military and have to worry about that kind of stuff I can't even imagine to go through it anymore like I don't know if I could do it again knowing if I had a rel like a close relative in the military or like like that kind of thing like and it's something that I've considered doing myself um over in Afghanistan I don't know if it's where he was killed or if it's a separate memorial that they'd set up for him but there's a stone with his name on it and it's um it's like a representative of him over there at the at the base that's there so it's I really want to see it but I don't know if I'll ever get to and it's something that that's and that's fine like I I visit his grave um before I left my the city that I that we were that he was buried in um I made it a point to make sure that I went to his his grave before I left um just so that I had the option of not the option but it's just so I had seen him um before I didn't have the option to go see him um I don't know if I really have anything else to say on the issue other than the fact that like I said I don't know if I ever really truly got over it um, I've gotten through it because I had to, um, it still makes me emotional every now and then, but it's not, it's, sad, it's sadness, but it's not, it's not crippling. Like it, it's like, I've made it through it. It's a fact of life. I've had to accept it. Plenty of other people whose lives he touched have accepted it as well. And it's just the fact that I've, uh, I don't even know what else to say. I hope that nobody else has to go through what I've gone through with this. It's something that is so hard. Like I said, losing your best friend is not like losing a, like an older relative or a family member. Um, the death of a, of a grandparent or a parent, again, I've not lost any, any of my close, any of my cousins that are of same age to me so I, I don't have that to compare to but like to lose a family like a parent or like and of course that's tragic and it's hard but there's always a part of you that expects it you know you're not going to outlive your parents you're not going to outlive your grandparents that you're eventually going to expire and it's something that that's a fact of life you never expect to really have to go through losing your best friend um, that's the same age as you and it is it's somebody that you just expected to always be there so in closing, he's got my ultimate respect. Um, I still, I love him. I'll never forget him. And I hope that anybody he's touched feels the same way that I did. And I can only hope that everybody out there finds somebody like him to, to have in their life because it's, it was such a, the whole thing was, it was just an honor to have him to be around him and to be to be in his presence but like he's just so positive i hope somebody can get that kind of positivity and strength in their life so thank you guys for listening um and thank you for bearing with me i will uh hopefully i'm hoping to post this on remembrance day so it's um so thank you for watching have a good day and um and salute your your local veteran Thank <laughs> you.